everyone, welcome back. I'm Katie and today I'm going to be talking about coffee and books. What a great combination, right? I and this video are in collaboration with Javi Coffee and that's what I have in my cup right now. You saw me make it and this is my first time making froth milk, so almond milk, but I'll, I'll put the recipe up when I made it just in case you want to try it, but I'm not a huge coffee drinker, but I do love caramel macchiatos, cappuccinos, you know, a light coffee flavor. So I'm excited to try it. Are you ready? Because I haven't tried it yet. I'm going to mix it up a little bit. <laughs> okay. That is surprisingly good. Okay, I'm happy with it. Mm. <laughs> okay, so I need more caramel. <laughs> But that's just me because I like my coffee sweet. It was almost there. But I think one teaspoon is like I went a little under one teaspoon and that's perfect. They say one teaspoon, one to two teaspoons, depending on how strong you like your coffee. I think half to one teaspoon is good for me. I like my coffee kind of more on the lighter side. Definitely the foam mixture and the caramel. But I need more caramel. But it's good. All right. So I... Did a ton of research before I accepted this collaboration because I wanted to see like okay what is their company about I never heard of Javi so I went into it and it's actually pretty cool they are a dairy-free sugar-free that's why I needed the caramel because I do not drink sugar-free coffee but for those of you that do it's sugar-free <laughs> dairy-free see I can't stop drinking it even though it doesn't need more caramel but that's on me <laughs> um, but it is sustainable ethically sourced, plant sourced, and non-GMO, which was actually good because I did some research and I saw the non-GMO. I'm like, okay, this is great. Like it's plant-based, it's concentrated. So don't <laughs> drink more than you think because it's like only one teaspoon. That doesn't sound like a lot. It's a lot, believe me. So I'm drinking it. I'm liking it. I just need it sweeter. <laughs> but the taste wise, I do like the taste. Like honestly, I just, oh, now I got a really good flavor of caramel. Maybe I just needed to mix it more. But I just had a coffee at a local shop. So it honestly tasted like this. It's, yeah. <laughs> the bottle is so small. It's 35 servings. And I'll put the price here, but I think it's only like between $15 and $20 for a bottle. I'd say it's a great deal. So with that said, I keep drinking it, so it must be good. This is in collaboration. I will put my coupon code. I did write it down so I wouldn't forget. If you use my coupon code Katie88780, and I will put it on the screen as well as in the description of the video, as well as my referral link. So if you use my link, you get the 15% 15, 15 coupon code, as well as I do get a small commission at no extra expense to you. Don't worry about that. But I thought that was nice. So besides getting free coffee, I get a small percentage. So if you do like coffee and you're like, you like drink coffee like crazy, did you see how easy this was to make? I mean, that's another reason why I don't drink coffee because like you either need to have a machine with the pods or you wait for it to percolate for like five minutes or whatever. This will literally minus the frosting because that's extra. I didn't have to do that. Literally probably took me less than a minute. I mean, ice cubes, coffee, and water. I might do almond milk next time. All right, so on to my tag video. So this tag was called a reader problem tag, and I was tagged by one of my one of my very dear friends on YouTube. I will link her channel down below. But there is a ton of really just interesting questions. I've never really thought about these things, so let's just go ahead and talk about it. So the first question is: You have twenty thousand books on your TBR. How in the world do you decide what to read next? That's probably not an exaggeration, honestly, because I probably have a lot. <laughs> All right, so in the beginning of the year, I have yearly reading challenges. I have about, I would say, how many reading challenges? Probably between six and eight yearly, really, yearly reading challenges. That's a lot, and that's an average. I could have more, I could have less. But I have, I make my list of books 
ahead of time. Like right when I get the challenge, I'll be like, okay, what fits? I look through all my lists for like my most anticipated books. So I see what fits and I fill out the entire list. So I'm never out of books. If I can't find something to read, I just reference my yearly reading challenges. So I'm like, okay, this is something I have to read for the yearly reading challenge. I don't have anything else that fits. I'll read it. Um, every month I pretty much set a TBR. I liked how my friend put it where like, technically we're still all mood readers, all mood readers, even though some of us pick TBRs, some of us don't, we're still mood readers. Cause like we choose when we're in, when we want to read those books, we choose you know, what books we're in the mood, we're in the mood for that month. So technically, yeah, we are all mood readers. So I do set a TBR each month just based on my mood. I mean, am I in the mood for, I mean, for February, I was in the mood for romance books. So I picked based off of that. Uh, and yeah, so, or if I have books to review, those definitely take priority. But other than that, you know, that's pretty much how I set it. I just pick a TBR for the month. And if I go off it, that's fine. You know, I need to be more kind with myself about that. All right, next question is, you're halfway through a book and you're just not loving it. Do you quit or are you committed? Um, if it's something that I disagree with, like if it's explicit scenes or very strong language, I will immediately DNF it. If it's more of it just being slow paced and maybe not, maybe the characters aren't interesting, I'll, I'll DNF it only if it's not for a reading challenge. If I have it picked for a reading challenge and nothing else fits, then I'll push through it. But otherwise, I would probably DNF it. DNF it. All right, next question is, the end of the year is coming and you're so close, but so far away on your Goodreads reading challenge. Do you try to catch up and how? I set my goal low. Um, I read over 300 books last year. I don't know if I'll hit that again. If I do, that's great. If not, that's okay. I set my goal at 100 because I know I'll reach that. Um, you know, if you know you read 50 books a year, set your goal lower than that. Set your goal at like 30 or 25. If you make that, then that's amazing. You know, and if you want to bump your goal, Goodreads lets you do that. You can change your goal after you make your first one and just keep changing it. That's what I do. If I reach 100, then I bump it up to 125 or 110 or something like that where it's attainable and I'll do that. So last year, I was actually five books short. I wanted to reach 350. I just wanted an even number. I know, I'm crazy. But I just, last day of the year, I just read five comic books and graphic novels. That's it. So I caught up. It was a quick and easy way to pick up that goal. So that's a way if you want to bump up your goal, just read a couple of comic books or graphic novels middle grade books. Super easy and super quick. All right, so the next question was, uh, the covers of a series you love do not match. How do you cope? Um, I'm personally okay with covers not matching. Um, I'm more apt to be upset if like um, size differences, like say like, you know, like this one and this one, oops, this one and this one were a part of the series. Like, there's a definite height difference between these two books. Like, if those were part of a series, I'd probably be as upset about that. But other than that, honestly, I wouldn't even be upset about that because I, I probably have some series that, like I have one book that's a hardcover, some are paperback. So honestly, if I find them for really cheap, it wouldn't matter to me as long as I have the whole series. So I don't think it really bugs me that much, honestly. All right, the next question is, Everyone and their mother loves a book you really don't like. Who do you bond with over shared, feeling, over shared feelings? So over a book that I didn't like, I probably wouldn't share my feelings with my family because like my parents aren't huge book readers. And so I literally only give them recommendations for books that I absolutely loved and then they'll read it. Uh, I usually don't share books that I didn't particularly like. Like, hey, mom, dad, read this. You may not like it, but, you know, so I feel like I would definitely go to my booktube community, go to my friends, say, hey, what did you think of this book? You know, you know, I know everybody's loved it, but like my feelings aren't that great. I've actually had that happen, you know, like, you know, my book club, like some of us have, you know, where we give the book five stars. Some of us give it only three stars. So like, 
you know, it's great to have like kind of like a split where like we can talk about it and just be like, you know, some of us agree and some of us don't agree. So yeah, book, book community is definitely the best way to go, you know, and as long as you're nice about it, you can have a good conversation. <laughs> All right. Next question is, uh, let's see, I almost lost my place. There we go. You're reading a book and you're about to start crying in public. How do you feel? Okay, number one, I, I'm very hard to get to cry. Like, it has to be emotional, such as this book right here. Luckily, I was home at the time. Because, <laughs> yeah, um, I can hold it in pretty good in public where, like, I'll feel the emotion of crying, but, like, I won't actually tear up and cry in public. Like, I almost did one time in a car ride with my family, but I thought they were going to be like, what's wrong? What's going on? So I didn't cry. And, yeah, so I don't really cry in public, so I don't know how I would feel about that. Um, yeah. I cry at home. I cried in front of my mom with this book, and that, that's a rarity. That's a rarity. So, all right. Uh, next one is a sequel of a book you loved just came out but you've forgotten a lot from the prior novel. Will you reread the book, skip the sequel, try to find a synopsis on Goodreads, or cry in frustration? <laughs> um, I really don't reread re books. Usually I, I attain the main plot quite a bit with, with uh, reading books. So like once I start a sequel, even if it's been like a year or a couple years, I can kind of get the gist of what's going on and remember a bit of, a bit about it. Uh, the only other thing I do is I do go on Goodreads to look up the synopsis and be like, oh yeah, I remember that now. So yeah, I don't reread before a sequel. I should, honestly, because sometimes it's been so long. But yeah, so I don't normally reread. I'll just go on Goodreads or I will hopefully remember as I'm reading the next book in the series. All right, the next question is, you do not want anyone anyone borrowing your books how do you politely tell people nope when they ask so I don't have a lot of book friends in my real life uh I had one and she borrowed one book from me and that was pretty much it honestly so like I'm okay for um if I know the person well I I'm okay letting them borrow if it's a signed book I might not because like those like, those are, like, kind of, like, my extra special books. But, like, you know, I'm more of, like, a recommender. Like, hey, like, you should read this book, you know. Um, if the library doesn't have it, I'll be happy to recommend it, you know, for them to purchase it or something. Like, I'm more of, like, like, I love my libraries, too. So I'm like, hey, you know, go to the library. You got to pick up this book. So, yeah, I don't have a lot of people. My mom borrows my books, but I know she'll take care of them. So, like, I'm okay with that. My dad, too. So, like, if I know the person, I'm fine. But... I might not if, like, I don't know how you take care of your books. I don't know. <laughs> I take pretty good care of my books, I would say. At least nowadays I do. <laughs> All right. So next question is, let's see. You've picked up and put down five books in the last month. How do you get over your reading slump? So I haven't had, actually, a reading slump in a really long time, which I'm very, very happy about. Uh, I haven't had one in about a year almost, I think. Um... I actually really love Chantel's tip, which I didn't even know that I, I do. I actually do, and it has been helping me. Uh, she suggested to, like, as soon as you're done finishing a book, pick up another one. Don't let any time pass in between, because that's when you start to see the gap, and you start to be like, oh, oops. <laughs> so I think that's when it starts to happen, is when you let... A day or two or three or four days go by then you start to see that reading slump um, I feel like one of my best ways to get out of a reading slump is honestly listen to a different way of reading so like listening I to say that <laughs> use a different way of reading that you don't normally use like if you normally read a physical book try an ebook or try an audiobook just to switch the format to maybe try to get a different perspective and I know that helps me actually a lot because I can't read a bunch of physical books in a row anymore I don't know why I've become more of a listener lately 
Uh, so I do that and then like I'll switch to an ebook or an audiobook and I'll switch back and forth. I think it's really helped me. Coffee drink's almost gone already. <laughs> All right, so next question is, there are so many new books coming out that you're dying to read. How many do you actually buy? Most of the time, zero. Uh, <laughs> not to say that I wouldn't, but at the you know, right now I don't have a job. I used to sell jewelry at a bookstore and that store is now unfortunately closed. It just closed re recently. So at the moment, I don't make an income coming in right now. So I don't buy books unless like, you know, if we maybe have like a cashback bonus on our credit card or um, that my family says, hey, you can use it. So other than that, I try to be really careful with my money right now, but I don't really... Re, I don't really purchase new releases unless they have like a big sale. Like I know some of the book companies, they'll have like a big sale going on. Not necessarily for new releases. So usually for me, I just wait. If I know it's a book I'm going to love, I'll get it from the library. Just hit my fingernail against the window windowsill. But if, I, if it's a book I know I'm going to really love, I'll just get it from the library and check it out there. And if I love it, then I'll just put it on my Amazon wish list for later. So I'll do that. Other than that, I mean, I do review books, so I get a lot of the books that I'm super excited about. So I thank the Lord, honestly, almost every single day for that opportunity to be able to receive a lot of my most anticipated releases and be able to share them with you. So, yeah. So I honestly, I have purchased quite a few just recently, but like I haven't spent that much. So not even a couple dollars really. So I've been doing pretty good and been blessed quite a bit. So I try to be really hard not to not to buy any more books, at least until my book trip in May. So we're trying. We're trying. All right. Okay. <laughs> Next one. Uh, last question is, after you've bought the new books you can't wait to get to, how long do they sit on your shelves before you get to them? I mean, this one waited a whole year or year and a half for me to read poor book <laughs> unspoken by Angela Hunt yeah that that was yeah that one waited a long time poor book um but usually well if it's a review book I try I try to get to it uh pretty quickly after I get to it um but my some of my books that I've purchased over the years have been sitting on these shelves for a year two years um, honestly, no later than that. I would say, honestly, most of my books are n no more than between two and three years old because I did a huge unhaul last year, got rid of like a ton of books that I've had on my bookshelves for like, you don't even want to know. <laughs> but like, yeah, most of my bookshelves now are pretty new between two and three years, but I had to have a couple that are older than that. Um, I think one of my oldest on my bookshelves now that I've been wanting to get to, I just haven't, but is um, this one, which, yeah, it's been on here forever and I still haven't read it. And that's Scaramouche by Raphael Sabatini. I don't know why I'm showing it to you, but I bought this on purpose because I was, I was looking everywhere, like at, at bookstores because I wanted to buy it in person rather than online because and this is the edition that I'm like so excited about because it has the actor from the movie, which I love the movie Scaramouche. And I just really want to try this book out because like, honestly, out of every classic out there, this is one that I think I'm going to enjoy is this author, Raphael Sabatini, because he writes swashbucklers and adventure stories. And I think I'd really enjoy it. And I just, I just haven't read it. I think I started it once, but yeah. So th I've had that book now f since I was in college. I think my first couple years in college. And that was like 10 years ago almost. So yeah. Yeah, that's been there for a while. All right. So that was an interesting book tag. You definitely got to know a little bit more about me that you may or may not wanted to know. So <laughs> all right. So um, I guess I'll tag a few people. I guess I'll tag. Who do I want to tag? I'll tag Jane over at Jane Reads. I'll tag Celestria. Uh, I'm going to tag Lovely Day with Holly, and who else do I want to tag? Who else do I want to know more about and tell all? <laughs> um, I guess I'll take, I'll take Sam over at the Book Bunch. Alright, so 
I hope you all have a wonderful day. Make sure to check out the coffee. It's actually really good. As I said, I'm already almost done drinking it. I definitely would add more caramel. If you're a caramel lover, because I think I only added like a drizzle. I add, usually add way more than that, so. <laughs> I was cut back for the video. <laughs> but yeah, so check it out. Use my coupon code. I'll link it down below and all the information that you want. So you'll be seeing this in a couple more videos as well, because, yeah, it's, I, I'll probably share this in my lives, too. I'll probably be drinking it, not tonight, but I have reading sprints tonight, but this video is coming going up tomorrow. All right, so I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I will see you all in the next video.